you guys may have seen something here on the internet recently that looks similar to what I'm doing right now. But welcome to today's video. Almost knocked over the tripod for crying out loud. Let's heat up this debate. Today's video covers a rebuttal with scientific facts about ballistic gel. What it represents, what purpose it serves for penetration testing in the bow hunting community. I get it, it's not going to take into account all the other variables that come into play. We'll, we'll talk about what we learned from ballistic gel testing, what a penetration test with arrows into gel gives us, and how to use those results. I will also cover some interesting facts in my rebuttal to RF's recent video. Let's get started on today's video. really shocked about this test so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna shoot brand new straight out of the package 100 grain rage tripan out of the three arrows that went the furthest with the field point penetration test Again, welcome to today's video uh, let's kind of go over this again uh, you know you may have seen something uh, in my intro here recently uh, on the internet and I kind of just want to go over a couple of things um, as a rebuttal to that video first we have to understand and start with the facts about ballistic gel let's give credit where credits due it was created by Martin Fackler it is used specifically to simulate the effects of a bullet. It's calibrated to match pig muscle, which is ballistically similar to human muscle tissue, okay? Um, we all know a deer's skin and uh, hair and elk and moose and caribou and all that stuff, they all vary. Um, so take that into consideration. Um, Ballistic gel is used by scientists to imitate the viscosity and the thickness and flexibility of human tissue, as well as how it behaves when it's struck by a bullet or some other shot propellant, okay? It's also used to see how the wound channel, uh, it's also used to see basically what the wound channel looks like, because if you get it, if your gel is shot by a bullet and it goes in there and it stops. You can extract the bullet. You know, there's all kinds of scientific stuff that I don't need to go into all that stuff. Um, but it's to check the devastation that the pre projectile creates. Those are all things that we need to understand about ballistic gel. It is not meant to allow things to penetrate all the way through it. Sure, you get a 50 caliber, a uh, firearm and fire it into ballistic gel, there's not gonna be anything left. You know, it, it's not meant to stop that. Um, 
but we do learn and take valuable uh, information from ballistic gel penetration testing within the bow hunting community. I've posted a couple of videos with ballistic gel. One thing we can say, and RF even admits it himself, you know, the muscle tissue and for a uh, moose is approximately that big. And you know, there's a little bit of that same tissue on the other side and everything else in between is mostly air. If you go inside the rib cage, we can't account for all the variables that happen in hunting. In other words, you got a spooked animal, you got um, uh, different shot angles, either from up high, coming down onto an animal, from down low, going up onto an animal for the Western hunters. Um, you know, straight trajectory, you know, ground level. Um, you also have distance to account for. Um, what else is there? You know, you got bones, you got quartering two, you got quartering away, you got broadside, slightly quartering away, slightly quartering two. You also have bone in uh, in there. You know, a rib cage is easier to get through than say a shoulder blade or, or you know, an actual uh, frontal shot. You know, the breastplate, if you miss in between that little V gap, you know, you there's too many variables. But what we are learning is if I take an extreme FOC heavyweight arrow like RF does, and put it into that ballistic gel and it goes that much further than everything else what does that tell me that obviously i'm going to have more penetration than anything else and if i do by chance hit a bone the penetration isn't going to be affected as much because i have a heavier arrow now if i go to the lightest arrow i have which is 380 grains, okay? And it's that much shorter than my heavy arrows, which are 538 grains with 125 grain tip on them. You know, it goes that much further. That just tells you I'm going to get more penetration, okay? So the ballistic gel, is it's a valid test. It doesn't account for all the variables, but it shows you if you have a straight broadside shot and you don't hit a rib, then guess what? You're going to get more penetration, right? I think that's what Ranch. I think that's what RF was trying to say, but he's just discounting it altogether as it's not a valid test. What well, is a valid test? Because let's look at this here these are just some of the broadheads I have I have a muzzy or not a muzzy good lord uh, Magnus Stinger buzz cut I even go way back to my crimson talons um, I don't remember the name of all these so you're gonna have to bear with me I got that one I got these really small fixed blades I got this really small fixed blade. I got these ones, which are absolutely horrible. The toxic broadhead. Yeah, I can't stand those. Uh, what else we got in here? There's a Muzzy G5. Um, I got these things here. You know, I did some arrow testing a couple years ago with all of these broadheads in here. Uh, there's a different uh, Crimson Tide and let's go to these. And we've got this mechanical broadhead here, got this mechanical and there's another very uh, big company out there that has mechanicals that I don't need to mention their name. Um, you know, you can't account for those variables. You know, if you take something this small with a head on it and it hits just off center of anything, you're gonna get deflection either way. 
which is going to cause penetration issues. Why? Because you are losing your momentum when you hit something solid, right? If I take two vehicles and crash them together 100% dead center, both of them, the momentum just stops, right? Um, if I take two vehicles and I put them off center, the momentum is carried and redirected a different direction. We all know that. You know, in my job, I do a lot of uh, threat assessments. And those threat assessments are meant to um, produce discussion among leaders to decide the best course of action to solve a problem. When you do your threat assessments and you come up with objectives, you can check March 8th objective as they are accomplished. Uh, but in order to accomplish them, you have to get different people's opinions from all spectrums. You know, if we just take arrow penetration in its most basic form, which is whitetail deer hunting, that's it, nothing else. If you have a direct broadside, 100% broadside, non-alert deer at 20 yards, no, we'll go even 25 yards with today's bows. And you hit your target mark, regardless of how um, heavy you, your arrow is, more than likely you're going to get a clean pass through. If you don't hit any ribs, no deflection, no nothing, you're probably going to get a clean pass through. If you're using a mechanical, okay, you're going to get deflection. At some point in time, you're going to get deflection because that deer is going to start to duck, okay? And when I say this, I know this is going to produce a bunch of hate comments and you're wrong and this, that, and the other. Just hear me out on this, okay? What you have to do is realize we're taking all majority of the variables out of it, which is... The deer's not docking the arrow, you know, you're at a medium uh, arrow weight, uh, medium poundage, you know, I'm not talking extreme poundage, I'm not talking extreme arrow weights, I'm not talking extreme light weights, I'm not talking, you know, 17 to 18% uh, FOC, you know, I'm just talking mediocre, the everyday hunter that goes and buys a bow and gets an arrow, and a broadhead set up, you know, you're looking at on average 260 to 280 feet per second. And, you know, you're looking anywhere from 400 to 500 grains on your arrow weight. Okay. You take all the other variables out, more than likely, you're going to get a clean pass through. There, there's, there's no way around it. Right. If you don't, that is because there is a variable that we cannot recreate in our backyards with ballistic gel, with cardboard boxes, with any of that. I understand RF's uh, philosophy. I respect it, okay? But I think there's also an extreme side to it. And I think moving to that extreme side, there's no need for it. We've all killed deer, right? We've all lost deer. I've probably lost, I want to say, five out of the 20-some years that I've hunted. And this extreme FOC and extreme arrow weight crap has come up in the last five or six years. I remember when my dad hunted when I was a kid. He didn't worry about arrow weights. He just worried about spine. He's like, I need a stiff spine. And... You know, they were all aluminum arrows. Matter of fact, here. Luna, aluminum arrow, it's broke. Rocket broadhead, mechanical. So this is from way back in the day. I can't even tell you which rocket this is. You know, we didn't worry about extreme weights. 
I don't even know what this arrow. Well, let's let's do that real quick. So obviously there's some of this arrow that is missing, I believe. Let's see if this matches up here. Actually, none of it's missing. So obviously when I used this arrow, my draw weight hadn't or uh, my draw length hasn't changed because so this arrow with fletching with the broadhead comes in at 439.4 grains. Four, I'm gonna take the GoPro off of here just so you guys can see this. 439 grains. Do you see that? 439.2 and that was in the early 90s that I used that arrow so if you're telling me something has dramatically changed from then until now and it is not a coup to get these newer carbon, ex or not carbon express, but carbon arrows, more money, because they gotta come up with new stuff every year that they put out an arrow, okay? Or it's not a ploy for Matthews. Look how much they've changed over the years. They went from purely a solo cam bow to now two cams, all right? Um, if they don't change something on the bow every single year are you gonna buy a new bow no if they don't attempt to make it better or some new technology remember when they used to have harmonic dampeners on both sides of the limbs but now they say they don't need them why is that right um it, it, it's 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 just crazy and we could go on about this for hours and upon hours here's the deal ballistic gel has its purpose with penetration testing. Just as long as you understand what it is built for, what it is used for, and how to use it. It's that simple. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them up below. And until next time, Mike Wheeler's outside. <laughs>